Oh, it's Terry. Hey, this is one of my favorite games. It's Wizardry 1, Proving Grounds of the Mad Overlord. It was one of my favorite games growing up. It was on DOS. You can get it for free on DOS. This is a 3D Wizardry, Proving Grounds of the Mad Overlord. It's still in um, beta. He's early access. Early access, I should say. And you can play with different ways. <clears throat> if you look at the latest greatest build notes okay full character animations all 101 enemies now have full set of animation and the sound is almost complete so it, it, in the beginning you see a different enemies fall they'll all have the same a lot of the same animation now the giants each have the fall and when you kill them the thieves have a special thing when they die. It's all cool, very cool. Um, each of the mm, opening things is uh, Wizard Proving Grounds and Metal Lord. He's also here new tracks, including the, each individual building that you go to in the, in the castle. Okay. And the original game in the United States. The wizardry one, didn't, the thieves and the ninjas weren't allowed to hide and do ambush. Now they have an option. Well, you can because they did it over in, in Japan on the San, on the Super Famicom version. So the, we, they included it too. But if you want the true Apple II experience, you can always turn it off in the old school options menu. New console level layout options. Upon starting a new game, you'll now get to choose if you like to play the original Apple II levels or with the high layouts in the new NSS version. You should know that this option only changed levels 6, 7, 8, and 9. 6, 7, 8. So all the other, other ones are the same. <clears throat> the maze got a new facelift. More achievements on Steam. And if you need to fix something that you think should be fixed, they ask you to send it in. Now, I thought this was pretty cool. If it'll open for me. There it goes. It gives a little bit of history with, of wizardry. This is a remake built directly on top of the original Apple II version. To make the original game accessible to modern players while remaining faithful to the original feel and gameplay. Every revision has been made with a great this in mind. Players we feel we may change that to part in some single way from the original gameplay we have provided. Old school options that can be found in the, mo in the pause menu. Find any of our quality of life environments not to your liking. Simply activate these options to make the game feel more like it did in 1981. Now I'll prepare to enter the maze once more. Okay, that's their game options. See the options right here for the sound, all that good stuff. So we actually go in, select the game. I was like the new game. Erase all that. You get to name it like you're saving it, like any other one. So you can play the original layout or with the one. I don't really play. It doesn't really matter to me. So we'll go with the original layout. Okay. So you can make your mind now for quiet life. Do you wish to play with a new one? So you can configure these options. Configure options. Okay. I remember rolling for days with the original one. For the right attributes to get a samurai. So... These set points, I think it should start the other way. Should be random roll. That's the way I remember the game being. But it's been... I was in high school when this game came out. So it's been a long time. Attribute. I do a level. I do this one. So... I don't do aging. That's the other choice here is aging. 
when you rest, you get a chance to age. I usually do the film. I do the added in configuration. That's what that's explained the difference. Temple design. I also do the expanded expanded one. The original one do a lot less. This one I don't really do I I have it enabled. You can recruit pre made characters from the tavern at different levels. Uh, based upon what you achieved. I usually have it enabled, but I don't use it that much because I don't really like the the stats that the characters have. Ambient map I have enabled. So they see around me. They can they can still says they can be tricked and everything. I use that this enabled as well. Conversation hints. I have it. I don't, know, I don't remember seeing a hint, but I have it enabled. Bad stuff on party wipe. I have it disabled. It doesn't really matter. I mean, most of the time I just create a new party and go back down. Surprise casting round. I have that disabled. If you do have it enabled, disabled. You have it disabled care enemy spells are not able to cast spells on the surprise rounds. That's like the original game. If you have it enabled, they can cast spells. So if you run into a pack of if you run into eight uh, eighth level bishops and you surprise them or they surprise you, they can all cast uh, fireballs at you. Then you're pretty much toast. If you if you don't if you have it disabled they can only do physical attacks against you and you have a chance that's why I look at it like I said before they did this one enemy in, in, uh, edification system you're going to inspect the enemy and roll for combat and all that stuff as I have it action redirection enabled it's only available to attack cast spell attacker spell will be redirected to another enemy if enabled and no spells going to be if uh, it, the spell won't be cast if it's, it's disabled the attacks against enemies no longer exist are lost as spells still far off and consume the spell points that's the game originally was and I don't like it so I use more modern and one enable it run away in turn order you attempt to run away and turn over preventing loss of actions around for all characters if unsuccessful disabled characters attempt to run away immediately if unsuccessful all characters lose a chance to act this round so I have it enabled so other characters can do something that's custom you have Martin original console and custom I have by yeah, we don't the age. Okay. Okay. So you either begin with the starter part or they're all second level or you can create your own characters. We're gonna create characters. Visit training grounds to make your characters or edit assistant ones to your liking. All new characters start with basic armor and weapons already equipped. Visit governments, travel, and add, remove, or reconfigure members of your party. Enter the maze to start your journey. This game is unforgiving. Build your party steadily, returning often to town to rest and level them up at the venture's end. And buy new equipment at Baltark's trading post. It's important to know that party members will die. You will resurrect them at the Temple of Kant. 
But sometimes it can be best to just start fresh, especially for unexperienced characters. After all, new characters are coming to town all the time. That is a very true statement. You will die. Period. So, so he said, visit tavern. Let's have a recruiting tavern. Be 12 season adventures available to recruit to your roster. Level 1 recruits are always free. We got to pay go for more of the other ones. Each time you return from the maze, the list of available recruits will be ref refresh with older recruits leaving and new recruits looking for new parties. Looking for uh, recruiting can be useful if your most experienced party is killed in the maze or you plan to get a new party to recover them. That is true. That would be helpful. So over here is your recruit character. You can see free, 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 free. Everybody's here free. And you have neutral, evil, and good. But as you can see, their stats are not terrible. But they're not great either. For a first level character. Okay. So when you put together a party, you, need, you can be neutral and good together, or neutral and evil together. You cannot put together a good and evil in the same party if you're making it in town. Okay. So that's the maze. That's the temple. That's the store. That's the inn. And this is the training grounds. I have the music turned off, but each of these places have different music. Create a character. So I, I usually use my Xbox controller as X. So you can see it, it rolls different every time. You don't have a person, you don't have a player yet, but 20 is a good roll. 20 and above is a good roll. The highest I've rolled is a 29. So say you want to make a samurai. So you start, you choose a race, if it will let me, okay, so you choose, you choose, you distribute your points, and over here, on the other side, it tells you what classes you have. So right now I have 20 points to distribute. Distribute. I need 15, 11, 10, 10, 94, 14. Oh, I messed up somewhere. What's going on here? Oh, piety. No. Oh. Okay. So I'm going to pick a dwarf. To be a samurai. And it takes a little less than that. So you fill them all in, you hit the A, or N or whatever, then you choose your Samurai, and Samurai can only be good or neutral. So if you're making a good party, you want to be the neutral or good. If you're making an evil party, you want to be neutral or, you can only have neutral if you're going to make them a uh, good party, a new, an evil party. And these are all the profiles, pictures you can choose from. Now, you can have you can also have a custom uh, portrait, and these are all the ones that I've created. Uh, the the scary looking ones. Uh, some of them the the game gave to us for free. Uh, quite a bit of them. But he's supposed to be a dwarf samurai. So you can pick a dwarf. And then you name it. And 
then you want to make elves make excellent mages so you do the same thing I just skipped a 20 you kind of want to go through slow oh, 19 aren't bad either why you want a lot of uh, attribute points is because although you want as much intelligence as you want although you can you don't want um, mage same thing if it's going to be a mage you want to be good or evil or whatever you can't be evil in a good party so I'll make him good and then elves go the other way so you keep on building characters like that until you get six of them I'm just going to go ahead and grab six uh, you need a mage You need a thief. You need a fighter. Let's see, so you add the party. Samurai, fighter, priest. Priests are better fighters than thieves, so you want to uh, you want you want the priest on the front line, and another mage. I usually use two mages. Okay, so there you have your party. Now you come up here back to the training grounds. You come over here and inspect them. And you change their name, their portrait, and their class. Right now, he's not eligible to change. He can change into a fighter and a mage. That's it. And you say if he wants to be a lord, he needs to get one more intelligence, two more piety, one more fatality, four, uh, fatality, four more agility, and seven more luck. And you remember earlier when we were doing this, he gets one to three every time he levels. This is where you go to heal up. Now they have a button Y or whatever here for the mass. You see on the right hand side uh, where it says Y, that's for mass uh, healing. So everybody heals and restores their spell points. If you want to look at anybody individually, you can sleep individually, look at the character. Just follow the prompts. And then if you need to move them, as they die and they don't go back to where they were originally positioned. The time where we visited the temple will tell you if you need to heal somebody. And the store buy, sell, remove curse item, identify, and leave. So we're going to go inside the maze. They're going to talk to you. Okay, so this is the first step. You can either go left or right. Left. It tells you to put the map. See the door. This is your first combat, but this is not in combat this time. So you walk around the room. It saves right there. That's something you they told you in the notes. Let you know when to save it. Go find the terminal and inlet. You won't get there every time you go down, only the first time. Go in this room. Again, nothing. I want you to use some combat. Nothing. Oh, finally. Okay, the only thing with combat outside of the door, 
you go through a door and then you have combat you get a chest you just fight wandering monsters they don't leave any chest so there's no goodies in them okay I don't want to inspect okay then I want to inspect like I said the first is hide Slime is not real hard to kill. So, I don't worry about it too much. They don't worth any experience points either. If you want to see the original one, like the little white over there, you click on... Well, finally, go to the room, you get an encounter. The as you get higher in level, the small humanoids will run away. The skeletons never run away. So it's better to kill the small humanoids first, or put them to sleep. You can do that too. They do pack a little punk a punch. See they're identified now. Okay, so if you're a priest that shows the bad guy. So you get you bring it back, take back fight, fight. So which one fight? See this symbol right here is Dispel Undead. You get no experience points if you dispel them. So I hardly ever use this right here. I much rather kill them with a sword. because we set it up all the front is attacking the second row but because we have the more and modern setup they'll attack the if that bottom row's back row is deceased they killed they'll attack the front row instead so that's, that's, they'll automatically do that if you don't have it set up like that they just won't do anything for that round they'll just the rounds over with Okay, so we can see almost one's almost dead. We got the chest. First time we do it, and you got a thief on your party. The thief says, let me check it out. Got a pretty good chance of not... Uh, get a little bit gold. Sometimes you can find some non-magical stuff. I don't want to go there yet. So we go back up the stairs. Take it over. And you heal them. If you are, went up a level, there'd be a, a an up arrow in front of disease. So you'll know you went up a level. And it'll be on your character sheet too. Well, that's enough for today. Thank you for your time. Please uh, come join me for the next video. Have a good one.